All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. So we got more to talk about. I just got done doing a video about the Rose and Carla Esparza fight uh, and the thing everyone missed. Like after, apparently no one else saw it. I don't usually do this. I don't usually plug other videos on my videos, but watch that video. Seriously, just watch, just give it a run. I'm going to put the main point at the beginning. Give that a run. But right now we're going to talk about Charles Oliveira. We're going to talk about Islam Makhachev, Conor McGregor, Chandler. We're just going to talk about, first we're going to talk about Charles Oliveira, actually. This is, we're going we're gonna to have a nice arc to this video. We're going to cover a lot of different things. I don't even have any idea what the title is going to be because I'm going to talk about so many different things that I'll end up titling it what the main point is. But we're going to talk about Charles Oliveira. Then we're going to talk about who he's going to fight next. The likelihood of that going a certain direction. We're going to talk about Khabib too. Because guess what? Islam Makhachev probably going to fight him next. Khabib's in the mix. We got Connor coming back. Chandler. There's a lot to go over here. And I'm going to enjoy it. Now, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Tell every single person that you've ever known. And you want to know why? Because you should. And this is the best YouTube channel in the MMA. What? 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 I was going to say the best MMA channel on YouTube, but that's not probably true. But just the thing you say. <laughs> just the thing you say. Anyway, um, so here's the deal, okay? So Charles Oliveira is a guy who had had his, like, I'm not, I don't want to re-go over this too much because everybody already kind of knows this narrative where, like, he was a guy that could be broken, right? He's a breakable guy. Like, he's a guy that if he gets touched, he kind of gives up, whatever. When he was younger, that was... That seemed to be the case at 45. And then he essentially, he, you know, he reinvented himself at 55. He already had an incredibly well-rounded skill set, but his, his jiu-jitsu is absolutely unreal. And we're going to talk about that in a second because he does something in these fights that is very notable that I do not see. I, I'm like, I honestly might say he's in a league of his own and he does this different than almost any other fighter that I could think of. We'll get into it in a second. But as his skill sets developed, his, his striking is, is legit, dude. Now, I will say this. He gets touched in the first round a lot, right? Like in every single one of the last four fights. Like, so he used to get touched. He used to be breakable. Now he gets touched and he's not breakable, okay? Now that is incredibly notable for the reason that like the, the thing, right? Like, the thing that draws me to the sport. It's like, what's the, what's this guy made out of, dude? I was talking about this last night with someone where we were, they were like, like they were, you know, someone who was on the trip with me named Chris. And he was telling me about his story. He's just talking about like, you know, a thing, I'm not going to, you know, get into the details, but the thing that he went through, right. That he now believes like defined his life, which was kind of like a rock bottom and where he built himself from. Now I am an absolutely 100% firm believer in this. Like a person who's never faced any real struggle is not a person that is going to have a firm backbone. It's not their, it's not their fault, you know, but like a person who is a, a superstar basketball player, it goes directly to the NBA after one year in college makes like, you know, $20 million a year retires. Age four, like they've never faced any real adversity. What they think to be adversity is not real adversity, right? I like guys who have faced real adversity and had to fight through it. Like it, and I'm talking about in life, you know, and I mean, I've been pretty open with my own shit in here. Like I've gone through some shit. Like I had to build myself. Like I'm, I'm, I'm winning at fucking everything now. I'm winning at everything. And I could say that without sounding like a prick, at least to people who are actually listening because I lost at everything first. Like I'm not like, I'm not slapping my dick on the table here. I'm saying like, I built myself back cause I'm a hard fucking man. And I got built into a hard man by going through incredibly hard times and having no choice but to fight. Like, no choice, no options. You know, fucking kill yourself or just start working. And then I built myself back. And I'm saying like, that, that's why I love this sport because like the octagon is like this like, it's like a metaphor for all of that, like, like a person's life. Cause it's all about like the preparation, you know, how strong can a person be mentally, how much commitment can they have going into a fight? And then once they're actually in there and they face real adversity in there, how do they respond? You know, you don't get to like, like with a regular person, like my life or whatever, like, and believe me, I, there's, there are all kinds of shit that I suck balls at. I'm not like, I'm fucking a million miles from perfect, but I'm fucking resilient and I'm, and persistent and if I set my mind to something I'll just fucking do it and I respect those traits in other people but 
it's there's not another example of something where you can you can kind of take that experience that normally takes years like years to see what a person's built out of and just reduce it into a 15 minute experience that you can watch as a viewer you know people come in there they want to see kicks and punches fuck that i mean yeah obviously it's awesome but I want to see what they're built out of, dude. Like, I want to see what they're fucking built out of. And so, like, the thing with Charles being a guy who was known for cracking and then now being the hardest dude. in Like, he is the hardest motherfucker. Like, like, you've, like you've never seen Khabib hurt. Now, I'm not, and I am not even moderately implying that Khabib would crack if he got hurt. That's not my point at all. I'm just saying he's so good that you never saw him hurt like you've seen Charles hurt in the last three fights. You know, it's a bad example because I know Khabib's hard as a fucking nails. But I'm just saying, you just don't know. With Charles, he's gotten racked in the last three fights. Three times in the first round, it looked like in all three of the first three, every single first round of the last three fights, he's gotten nuclearized, like beat down. The Dustin Poirier fight, he looked like he was going to be done. The Chandler fight, he really looked like he was going to be done. He survived, won in the second round. Des- Dustin fight, he survived the first round and then dominated the rest of the fight. The Gaethje fight, dude, he didn't just get knocked down. He took a shot that was so heavy that he thought he was okay, and then his brain did that slow short circuit. Like, the, the, the slow short circuit, people don't come back from that. At least, I mean, not normally. Like, normally, guy, you know, guy... Boop, and you just bap gets hit with something really heavy and they think they're cool and then you just watch over like like usually it's like three seconds where it's like one one thousand two and then you start to see them jiggle legs and they fall that's like a real short circuit that's not like a flash knockout that's like a there's something not functioning right there in your brain stem and it's it's very rare to see people recover from that and he not only recovered but very, very quickly had turned the fight around and was aggressively moving in the direction of Justin and hurt him and then finished him. Like, and that wasn't even the first heavy shot he took in the fight. Like he's built out of fucking granite, man. Like he takes those shots and it doesn't phase him. He doesn't even, he doesn't even, he doesn't doubt himself for a minute. Like not, not for a second, I mean. Like he gets hurt like that. He's, he's just in iron survival mode where he's like, survive you know, survive and I'll turn this around, you know, all I have to do is survive and then my chance will come. Like my spot will come and it has in all three fights, but it's, it's an incredibly, incredibly impressive thing. It's very impressive, but it does. You have to call into question his striking defense. You have to early on at least because it's not like it happened once. It happened in all three fights. So, You have two conclusions about Charles Oliveira from those incidents. One, iron. He's a fucking iron man. Two, he is hittable. Very hittable early, dude. Like, very hittable early. Now, again, he did just go through three of the hardest hitters. Certainly, I mean, Dustin Poirier is, I mean, Dustin Poirier hits real hard. But certainly Chandler and Gaethje are like nuclear power guys, you know, like they're trying, like Poirier is more precision volume, you know, timing beats, you know, timing beats power, precision, you know, all that. Justin is like, I'm going to literally fucking, uh, he, Justin Gaethje yesterday swung, uh, like, I mean, I know you guys all saw the fight. He fucking threw an overhand right. He fell down. He threw it so hard. I've I've never seen anyone do that. I don't think, dude. He literally threw a punch so hard. He fell. I mean, at least not in like a title fight, which is awesome. But to the point I'm making, like he landed flush on, on Charles and he survived. Chandler nuked him and he survived. But that doesn't mean they'll always survive. And the other thing is, I mean, you, you have to, since we're kind of talking about X's and O's of fighting Charles, you have to also understand that the fact that he's so dangerous on the ground, you know, that people don't want to go down into the shit with him or they won't go down the shit because he's too dangerous. And so they stop and let him back up. Dude, anyone who's a fighter will, will, you know, tell any casual that doesn't know those fucking five seconds, you know, the difference between getting your bell rung and then having a dude on top of you throwing elbows immediately versus getting your bell rung and you're, you know, and you're here getting ready to defend 
and they back up and let you up and you kind of slowly get up and you give yourself, you know, you get about five seconds where you know you're safe, where they're starting to back up, you know they're not going to attack and you get to kind of step back, stand up. Five totally unchecked seconds for you to recover is a lifetime in a scenario where you're hurt, dude. And so Charles does have a tremendous advantage there, a tremendous advantage, which is one of the main reasons why he's being able to recover for sure. But that comes from him being so fucking good. Okay. So it's not like, that's not like a cheat code. It's he's so nasty on the ground that he's getting time to recover because people don't want to engage him once he falls down, you know? In all honesty, when you think about it like that, that 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 brain short circuit, maybe when he's even a little bit rattled, he should just fucking lay on his back. And he's like, OK, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm going to fall. Because he knows they're they're not going to come in and engage. They're just going to like, you know, they're going to back up if they're smart. I wonder if that's what he did there anyway. But he gets touched. So I'm saying there there is there is a shot that any guy gets hit with that. They're done. They're out, dude. You know? as Tony Ferguson found out last night. Okay. There's no one eating that shot. No one. Like if anybody's trying to tell me that that was like, uh, you know, Oh, look at, you know, Tony's Tony's chin is gone. Uh, what you think that that knockout was due to Tony's chin deteriorating? No one's eating that shot. Okay. I'm not saying that everyone would get hit with that shot. That's not, you know, it's his own kind of style that allowed him to get hit with that shot. I'm not, you know, and I'm not throwing rocks at him or anything. I'm just saying, there is no one who takes that kick to the chin the way that, that Tony does, did and is not unconscious. Fucking no one. I mean, I'm talking, you know, in that weight class or whatever. And so there's a shot that Charles can get hit with that would be the same. He'd be unconscious if he took that shot from Chandler. And so he can be beaten. He's not unbeatable, dude. Like far from it because, you know, he's getting touched. And so this brings us into his next couple likely fights which is kind of the point of this, okay? Because he's going to fight Islam Makhachev next almost certainly, right? Like, it makes it, it makes no sense for them to do Islam versus Darius first. Like, none. I understand why Dana and the, and the organization got pissed and they were like, okay, you're not, uh, like, you're not going to do a replacement with RDA or, uh, it was RDA, right? Yeah, I think it was RDA that needed a, a replacement. And they asked him to do it and he said no. And they were like, fine, then you're going to fight Darius. Because, and I understand why, like, they gave, like, they asked for more money, right? Which, of course, I mean, like, it's understandable why you'd do that. But it's also understandable why the UFC would be pissed. They'd be like, are you serious? We just gave you your show and win money to fight Bobby Green, who every person on earth, including us and you, knew had no chance against you. So we basically just gave you that free money. Now we're giving you a real fight. Like, you want a title shot, right? Here it is. Like, just win this fight, get a title shot. No, we want a million dollars. Well, we just gave you double your pay. All you have, I mean, assuming that you win. I mean, you didn't even break a sweat over here. So, like, I understand both sides' positions. But, like, uh, but now that the dust settled on that, there's no reason for anybody to be playing vendettas. What's the right fight for Charles? It's Islam, obviously. 1,000% it's Islam. Don't, don't, like, because here's the thing. Darius is a monster. Darius is a monster. Do you hear anyone clamoring for a Darius versus Charles Oliveira fight right now? No, you don't. You hear them clamoring for an Islam Makashev versus Charles Oliveira fight. And so what, what upside is, for the business is there in having Islam Makashev fight Darius? All you do is put the Islam versus Charles fight at risk. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be Darius versus Oliveira. You want it to be Islam versus Oliveira. So like, why not just do that fight? Doing the Darius thing just to like, just because you're being vindictive because he asked for more money, you know, when he was going to come in as a replacement fighter. That's just, I mean, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. They're going to get like that. That's the that's point I'm making. I'm not shaming the UFC. I'm telling you guys, they're not going to do the Darius fight. They're just going to have Islam fight Charles because it's just smart business. It's a correct business play. And so when you think about that fight, right? When you think about that fight, you know what? Let me rewind for a second. The other thing I was going to say about Charles that I saw him do now in all of these fights, essentially is most guys, because he's, he's such a strong striker now, you know, like he looks like a shoot box striker. Like he looks like the old school, like, like a guy who's just dangerous everywhere. And he's throwing power, dude. That's the big change that I've noticed is like, if you go back, go back to like the Kevin Lee fight, go and watch Kevin Lee fight. He's got very pure striking. 
but he's throwing heat now, dude. Like now he's like, he's not just like, it's like, you know what it looks like to me, actually, what it looks like to me is he's one of those guys. And and this makes perfect sense because his, his jujitsu is so perfect. He's like a fundamentals guy, right? Like he's a guy where the most minute movements are important. He's a details guy. That's why he's so fucking good at jujitsu. And so if he takes, he take the same approach into striking, like with jujitsu, I just know high level. I understand that high level, you know, the details of the technique, all that stuff really matters. I couldn't tell you what the high level stuff is, but I understand how that applies to striking. And so when I watch him strike, I can tell he's exactly that type of striker where he's like, he is thinking about very, very like crisp, like he wants to have perfect technique and you could see him almost thinking about his perfect technique. If you go back four or five, five, like five fights and he had great technique, but you could see he's thinking about it. And now you watch him and you could tell it's autopilot. Like he's that he doesn't need to think about it anymore. He's got perfect technique, completely muscle memory dialed in. And so now he's throwing fucking heat, dude. Like now he's throwing heat. I challenge you to go watch the fight with, with Justin Gaethje and then go back five fights and watch him strike. And then tell me how much heavier his shots look, you know? But anyway, so he's throwing heat. But here's the thing. So when he hurts guys, right? Most guys, they're banging on the feet. They hurt a guy. The guy goes down. What do they do? Right? What do they do? They go down and they try to bang him out. Right? They try to fucking pound their face in and TKO him. Or, or, or like ve- generally, you know, you're, you're in the mode of like, even if you're, you know, a great grappler, you're in the mode of fucking striking. You knock a guy down, then you go in and you're in the mode of like punching. So you get position, try to, you know, put him out. Oliveira, he gets a guy hurt. He jumps on their back. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't think of anyone I've ever seen do this more often and effectively than Oliveira. When he gets a guy hurt, he goes down and he just is, he like, before a guy, when a guy's bell is rung, you know, because when you really think about how fucking smart this is, like how, how, how high fight IQ this is when you really think it through, it's like, if you're a guy as high level as, as Oliveira on the ground and you get to essentially start your grappling exchange with him in a dominant position, you're fucking losing. Like, you're not, you're going to lose. It's that, you're going to fucking lose. And so when he gets a guy hurt, he's just like, okay. And he, he uh, like attacks him so quickly and he just is making sure he's thinking position. Like, he's just, uh, that's what he's doing. He's like, once we engage, let me think about my position because he knows if he's here, he's got one hook in, he's got a really, like, if he's there, it's a wrap, dude. They're not escaping. Like, they're not going to fucking escape. Unless you do some crazy shit like fucking Chandler did when he jumped on his back. That was crazy, dude. But, like, and then he finishes him. He's a fucking assassin, dude. Like, Oliveira is an assassin. I'm a bit, like, I, I am very excited to watch him fight now. And this is, like, after this fight now, I've officially turned the corner to where I'm, like, I'm like legit, like, I'm not like, you know, he's like a guy that I was like, yeah, he's fun to watch, but I was always kind of like rooting for the other guy, not for no other, like, just cause he doesn't speak English. Like, I don't really know. I don't really know what to think of him, but he's so nasty now. Like he's so nasty. I love that guy, man. Not to mention he's got great style, man. If I'm the world champion, like if I'm the champion of the world, I'm 30 years old, whatever he is, 28. I'm wearing a fucking full body Gucci red suit to the fucking fight too, dude. He's got good style, good Portuguese, Brazilian style. He looks like a boss and he's lethal, dude. But anyway, so getting back to what we were talking about. Uh, so with Islam, you look at the rest of the division, okay? Like, look, fighting for the belt. Oh, it should be Darius. Nope, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. And you want to know why? Because no one is clamoring for that fight, Okay. As of this moment, Darius is fucking Leon Edwards, okay? He's an amazing fighter. I'm not saying anything negative about him at all, other than he needs to figure out a way to make his his name ring out to casuals. Like, this game is not just about the fights. And if you can't figure that out after this weekend, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Michael Chandler painted the fucking Mona Lisa this weekend. The Mona Lisa. I talked about it on my live stream last night, but I'm gonna talk about it again here because we're talking and I'm flowing here. But like, the Islam Makashev fight is an incredibly interesting stylistic matchup because in a pure grappling match, at least people who really know grappling, 
to where like just make sure I'm not claiming these opinions as my own. They say Islam is going to is 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 the better grappler that he's gonna get, that he's gonna dominate Charles positionally, right? But they said the same thing about Hamza Shemaev and Burns, and whether or not that would have played out that way in a pure grappling match or not, we don't know. But what we do know is that Burns was able to to you know be such a threat from his back that Hamza didn't want to engage in grappling. And so I actually think it's relatively fair to assume that you'll have a similar outcome when it's Islam versus Charles. Like, I don't think Islam wants to engage from the top if he's not in a dominant position either. Like, I don't, he doesn't want to end up in fucking Charles's guard either. You know, that's not a safe place to be. And so if it plays out the same way that Hamzat and Burns did, which is not even moderately impossible, now you're in a fucking striking match and you've got Islam Makhachev against Charles Oliveira. Now, Islam has knocked it, you know, he's, he has knocked someone out before with an overhand right. Mostly what he's done is he's made himself incredibly hard to hit. And he's such a huge takedown threat that people have to be afraid. You know, like, it's not just that his striking is, you know, striking defense is, is great, but it is. But it's not just that. It's that it's the same thing as like Rose and Carlo last night. If they're striking with him, they have to be very, very cautious. They can't fully commit because they know it's not, he, they're not just in a kickboxing match. If they overcommit, he's going to take them down and he's going to fucking break their arm. I mean, they know that. He's that I mean, he's he's that nasty on the ground. So, you know, him having great striking defensive metrics has a lot to do with the threat that he poses if he takes them down, obviously. And my point is with Charles, that changes. Like the the dimension changes there. Dimension, dynamic, whatever. And I'm saying if they're on their feet, dude, Charles is a murder machine, dude. He has turned a corner. He's nasty. Like, I have all the respect in the world for Islam Akashev. Like, and I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not picking Charles to, to win that fight necessarily. But what I'm saying is if it does end up on the feet permanently, you got to like Charles, dude. But Charles gets touched too, dude. Charles gets touched. Which brings us to the end of this video because now we're going to talk about Chandler and, and Connor because anything related to a title shot, you can't rule out Connor sliding into. Now, it's probably a, a tough sell at 55. But Connor can beat Oliveira. That's the point I was going to make. Is like, and the only reason I say that, I'm not saying that he'd be a favorite, but Oliveira gets touched in the first round, dude. He gets touched in the first round. Now, do I think Connor would fare better than these guys if he ended up in any way even moderately rattled with Oliver on his back? Of course not. He's getting strangled. But he definitely that, that's not a fucking walkthrough for Oliver because Connor's so dangerous in the first, which is where Oliver gets touched. It's not here nor there, though, because that fight's not gonna happen. Right? Now I'll tell you who is very likely to get another shot at Oliveira is Chandler. Because Chandler, it like. I don't know. Like, here's the thing. I don't know how these things translate at home. Like, I, it's, it's like, I, because I've gone to so many events in a row now, I actually like, kind of like don't even remember. All I know is I know what it's like in the, in the, in the stadium. And dude, you were coming Okay. When Chandler fought Ferguson, you're coming off of the Shogun and OSP fight, which was fucking awful. It's a sh I mean, I'm not trying to talk shit. Like I, I feel for the guys like, you know, towards the end of their career, you know, they're hanging on by like, and as a matter of fact, I need to do a video about Cowboy. But like, I feel for him and I'm not trying to like pile on like bullshit fight, but it was a shit fight. It's not a good fight, dude. It's a, in my opinion, it's a worse fight than Rose and Carla just because at least with Rose and Carla, I understood why they were at a stalemate, you know? Like I, I understood why. If you're curious about that, you can watch my other video, which I highly suggest you do because it's a fucking awesome video. But uh, with that one, it was just like, okay, so OSP, they're sparring. Like, they're just sparring. And OSP is going to do that, you know, that, that front gut kick over and over and over. Uh, Shogun's going to throw that same kind of looping one, too. Neither is really going to land very effectively. And they're just going to keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. And that's this fight. The place's energy was dead, like dead. People were booing the fuck out of that place, especially when when Shogun was dancing as if like he had won. I mean, th like that place was erupting in boos. Now, I don't boo. I don't 
You can ask anybody that's gone to a show with me. I don't boo, man. I don't boo fights. Like, I don't do it. Not ever. But, like, that place was, the energy was. And then Chandler and Ferguson came out. And Chandler lit that fucking place on fire. Okay. You know what? Actually, I'm going to do a separate video about this. I am. And it's going to be really good. All right. I love you guys. Peace.